All right, so our scenario, as you know, with Chopped, um, well, has everybody seen Chopped before? Let's ask that. Thumbs up. I got good. a couple thumbs up. <laughs> All right, yes, good, good. No, and a couple of no's, and that's okay. So basically, Chopped is a competition, and the cooks that are on it have to use certain ingredients. And sometimes they'll have really weird ingredients. So they may have licorice and snails in the same dish and they have to use both of them. Um, but then there are also options for you to be able to use other things from the pantry that you can self-select. And so what this, the whole premise behind this is, is taking that idea and just making it a fun lesson model for students to get them engaged. And this, if Pam, if you don't mind to go ahead and play this video, it's just kind of the introduction that they use on Chopped. Okay, tell me if you can hear it. I didn't check that box, so make okay. sure. Can you hear it? A little bit. Okay, and you can pause that. Um, so this is in this presentation and we will share this with you at the end, but this is just a way for you to be able to build interest at um, the beginning of a class by playing this little excerpt. And this is really just the audio with this one little visual. Um, you also could build interest by playing a little clip from a chopped episode. So just a couple of ideas to help build that interest for your students. And will you go ahead and move to the next slide? There we go. So benefits of using this lesson model are simply these things, choice, pace, and interest. And we're gonna look into those a little more in depth as we get into this. The plan for using the chopped lesson model is simply that a learner is going to receive whatever required ingredients. And so everything's gonna have that cooking theme, but they're gonna receive their required ingredients. So that might be the topic that you're studying. It might be a problem that they have to solve. It may be that they are required to use a certain tool or a certain website, or maybe even something hands-on, but something is gonna be required of them. And then they are going to have pantry ingredients that they are able to self-select. And so that's what you see in number two here. And then the third thing is the lesson, which is going to be the students developing their recipe. And so their recipe is going to be that learning, the mode that they're learning, how they're solving it, how they are showing what they've learned. So they're going to come up with a recipe and then they're going to add their recipe to whatever place that you have for them to share their recipe. And so we are going to actually try this and we are going to do a chopped challenge, but our chopped challenge is going to be very, very brief. So go ahead to the next slide. And here is our goal. We're going to share this with you in just a moment. We're going to share a link. And when we share this link, you've got two links within this, the blog article or the this blog. And so either of those you're going to be able to select to learn just a little bit about the chopped lesson format. What I'd like for you to do is skim those quickly. See what you can learn, one or the other. One's gonna give you more about how to use it. The other one is kind of just an inspirational thing about using Chopped. And then um, you are going to read the blog of your choice. Use at least one tool from the pantry and we're gonna share that with you. And then you're gonna link your recipe in the slideshow that's attached. So if you'll go on to the next slide, Pam. This is the pantry that you're gonna to have to use. And so the top two shelves give you lots of tools that you can select from. So this is your pantry. You can use any of those things to share what you find in, the, um, in one of those blogs and the wild cards there. So you can use that to add your own, but the ones on the bottom shelf are either recalled ingredients or they're expired ingredients. And so you're not allowed to use one of those. And so, um, this is what, how we're gonna try this. So if you'll go to the next slide. Um, 
the bit.ly slash chopped PD challenge is going to open the challenge for you. So you're going to have those the two slides before this as well as this slide and um, go to one of the blogs, explore it for about two minutes. And then you're going to use the next two minutes to pick one of those tools to share what you found. And even if you only get to share one thing that you found, we are not looking to develop a whole thing here. We just want you to see it from the student perspective. And um, then you'll be able to click on this recipe card and that recipe card is where you will share what you create. And so, it just open this challenge. Um, it's just going to show you exactly what we just did. You're welcome to open it if you would like to. Just so they can kind of see what sure they what it should look like for them. Make sure that they get to the right. And it should be a view only. And it's going to be the challenge with a repeat of the three slides that we just looked at that have the live links for you in that. So you don't have to go to those blogs. You can click right on those links. All right, so I'm going to say go two minutes and then in two minutes I'm going to prompt you to move to the pantry to pick a way to share what you um, learned. I know that was a very short amount of time, but hopefully you've been able to skim at least through a blog enough to get an idea. And so now what I'd like for you to do is to continue down in your challenge to the pantry page, and you're going to select one of these tools on the top two shelves to share at least one thing that you learned. Um, Honestly, I think I would select, if I were you, uh, probably Vocaroo because you're going to be able to speak and tell us something that you learned. Or if you are familiar with Jamboard and want to go to Jamboard to be able to type something in. So again, this is simply giving you that student uh, perspective of what this is like. The other option you might want to do is jotting it on a piece of paper or drawing it on a piece of paper and using your camera to snap a picture of it. Uh, the Venn diagram also will be a quick one. So I'm just trying to show you the ones that are going to be quicker for this particular um, time. So take about one minute to try getting an idea down. And if we had a lot more time, um, and if you were doing a whole lesson on this, uh, using things like the Linoit, Canva, um, these thing link, you can really beef those up and you're able to put a lot into that. And so obviously we don't have a lot of time to do that, but I wanted you to see some of the tools that are really great to use within this for students. Uh, so now what you need to do is go down to the one that says product recipes and if you click on that it should open this recipe deck. I'm going to also put that link in our chat too. Great thank you and so when you open that recipe deck there is a a page for each of those different tools. So if you did a jam board you could come right here and you should be able to edit it go right there drop your link in uh, Screencastify if you did that, or if you did a picture, you could always paste that picture in on one of those slides. Um, the same with the Vocaroo, if you got a link to a Vocaroo, you can come in and add that in there. Um, does everybody know how to do that? Because I'm not going to take time to, we won't even take time to do that unless somebody needs an explanation about one of those. Are we good to keep plugging away? 
I think so. I don't see anything in the chat. And I think people Wonderful. are creating it. Okay. So you are welcome to go in and add that back in later. Um, Pam, I'm just going to share since I'm in here. I'm that just going to go ahead and that present way I can post my screen. <laughs> okay, that's perfect. All right. So, um, so that's basically the way I would walk through this with a student, obviously giving them more time than we've given to you today. Um, but I want us to look at a couple of examples. I've got three different examples that are just basic examples. But um, one way that this is handy is to be able to have students have a discussion about something. And that discussion can be about anything that you want it to be about. So this one is about the American Revolution. And if you're breaking them into groups, whether they're in person or whether they're virtual, or you've got some of both, uh, if they have a discussion about some problem or some issue or uh, some topic, then the teams can work collaboratively to create a visual that represents that discussion. And so then they can actually get this particular slide, make a copy, and they can put their recipe here, whether it's a link or they could write out what process they went through. So there are a lot of options with something like that. This is the more generic of that. And so this is one that when you get these slides, you can take and redo, um, add in just the specifics that you want and use this with a class. And then here's another example, and maybe their goal is to solve a particular problem. So it could be a math problem. It could be a science experiment. Um, it could be any of a number of things, maybe some kind of a STEM challenge where they're having to go through that design process, uh, any of those types of things. And how do they get to a correct answer? Is there only one correct answer? How do they prove that? And so all of that is gonna be part of the exploration that they may have to come up with in order to um, come up with their recipe for success. So what I'd like for you to do is think for just a moment about something that you might be able to present to students that they would have to work through. Um, would it be working through a particular problem? Would it be a discussion? And what would that discussion be about? So what we'd like for you to do is think of an example. And if you've never done a chat blast, a chat blast is done by everyone typing it in the chat, but don't push enter. So go ahead and type in the chat something that you might use this with in a classroom um, and be kind of specific. I would do a discussion about and fill in the blank or I would share, have them share about a problem. I would have them um, solve this, but don't push enter until we tell everybody to. So go ahead and type that. And this is just gonna generate a few ideas for us to get started with. And chat blast is a fun thing for students to do too, whether you're in Google Classroom or in Canvas or in a Zoom. All right, has everybody got something typed into the blank? All right, are you ready? Oh, we've got a no, hang on. Let's give everybody a chance to finish. All right, ready, push enter. Okay, oh, pronouns, conjugations. What do you teach, Shannon? I teach Spanish. I wondered if it was a foreign language or if it was English. So, okay. Um, so I see some math. Oh, I love the inference about photographs or through photographs. Structure. Oh, character responses. Good. Lots of great ideas. I love those. Okay. So we're going to go back to our presentation. So a lot of good ideas. I kind of wanted to get our juices flowing and look at the pantry and see how we can differentiate this for different groups, for different lessons, um, for different students. So this is the first pantry and this is actually the pantry that I got from the Friday Institute. And this is the one that they shared with me. And so this is what I based the one that I shared with you a few minutes ago on. And this again is going to be in the presentation. So when you get this, feel free to take this, delete what you don't want, add what you do want, and change it any way that you would like to. Um, so this is basically giving you a pantry that is full of options for students to create products. 
And then we've got products that they've put at the bottom that maybe just are products that students have used over and over again. You know, there was a time that everything anybody did was in PowerPoint and students could probably do PowerPoint in their sleep. And so at that point, I probably would have made PowerPoint one of the ones that they couldn't use. Now it might not be PowerPoint, um, but there may be tools that you don't feel like lend themselves well to a particular project. That might be something that you're going to put at the end or on that bottom shelf. And so we consider them unusable because they're recalled or expired Fired, only because they are in recipe terms. Um, any thoughts or ideas about this? I put the link in the chat too for everybody. Thank you. Make a copy if you want. Yes. yes, and so this will force a copy for you as well so that you'll have that to edit. Great. All right, so the second one, I took that original and I have kind of revamped it. And what I would tell them to do on this next example is I would tell them that they have to use one of the tools on shelf one, and that is what they're going to use for in their learning process. Um, what I would include there are hands-on tools. So if, you're, if you've got all your kiddos back in the classroom, there you go, you've got that um, combination now where we're able to do blended learning and we're able to use these hands-on tools that um, they're able to manipulate and they're able to see and touch and feel and we want students to be able to do those things but then when they learn or they solve or they figure something out shelf two is going to have the tools that are going to allow them to demonstrate what they've learned or figured out. Um, so your hands-on tools may be a piece of paper and a pencil. That may be options that are up there. If you have some students that are in person, some that are virtual, you can link to digital versions as well. So that gives you some options there. And then again, limitations if you want to. And you can always take that limitations shelf out and make that double shelves for ways that they can demonstrate learning or even completely take that third shelf off if you don't need it. So this is an example of shelf two on the I'll top. Put that one in the chat too. Yes. Um, <clears throat> on the top shelf, you can see I've got a lot of uh, math manipulatives on there. I have the number cubes. I have dice. I have an abacus. But then there's also art supplies, there's that paper and pencil, there's books. How are you, what kind of things are you wanting them to manipulate? And then how are they going to share? And so I did include Flipgrid because Flipgrid is such a fantastic way for students to show something while they're talking um, with Jamboard. They could always take a picture of it and put it in there and add the text to explain it. Uh, with Seesaw, again, taking a picture and explaining it, or a video of themselves explaining it with the manipulatives, and then the same with Google Classroom, and then again, that wild card if they have something else, or if, if you have something else, and obviously, you can replace any of these in the one that Pam shared. Uh, the third one is varied modes of learning and ways to demonstrate learning. And so the top shelf is going to give students a way to self-select the way that they learn the content. How are you going to give them the content? Because everybody might not enjoy reading about it as much as they might enjoy watching a video or they might enjoy um, exploring through a game. So I'm going to jump onto that one. And I actually have this one linked. And so when you get this, feel free to go in. But this is all about the water cycle. So there's a video. There's an epic book linked here. There is an article that goes directly to a website. And then there's a game. And all of these are going to get them into learning about the different parts and the different um, and the modes of the water cycle so that it takes them all the way through it. But then when they've learned about it, how are they going to tell somebody else what they've learned. And so here again are some options for that. Oh, Jenna, one thing you might show them real quickly is just how you, if you don't know, how you just go in and recolor one of those to make it an off, uh, you know. Sure, yes, that's a, a good idea. Um, so if we had something else that we were going to put on here, um, maybe Vocaroo was going to be on the spot move it down for a second. Um, when you have it selected, if you go to the format options and recolor, if you do the drop down, you can recolor it. So if you see now Vocaroo is green, when I click that, it does take it into that grayscale and makes it the green, uh, the gray 
and white or black and white instead of the green. So there we go. We'll change it back and put it back up there and it's ready to go. So it's very simple to be able to insert that picture and then just uh, format and then the recolor to the grayscale. So our next screen does have the templates on it. And I wanted to talk very briefly because we're running out of time and I knew we would um, about some variations. And so a couple of variations, we did talk briefly about blending the technology with the hands-on. So I think this is a great way for you to be able to do that so that we continue with that blended learning environment, but students are still able to put whatever that they have done into their learning management system. So you've got a record of it, they've got a record of it. Um, the next slide that's on here actually has got some other variations that I pulled from online. And um, you can, instead of doing some prescriptive things here, whether it's the content sharing or whether you're prescribing what tools to use, you could actually leave it very open-ended. So it may be a very open-ended resource for how they're gonna learn. Um, maybe you're just giving them more prescription for how they're gonna present it or vice versa. Maybe you're gonna very, leave it very open as to, this is what we're learning today open-ended, how are you gonna present that? So here were some examples that I just wanted to include uh, that might give you some inspiration on that as well. Um, we do not have time to create a recipe. And so just know that as you get in here, if you create something, we would love for you to share that back to us so that we can see what you're doing. And then I'm happy to send it back out to all of you that are in the, uh, PD today so that you can see ideas and how people are using it in our county. And we have flown through that, but do we have questions or do we have ideas that you would be willing to unmute and share about so that um, we can hear from some of you? did put the full presentation in there too, so. Great. So you have the presentation link, which is the bit.ly that's there on this page. Um, feel free to contact Pam or me if we can help you or if we can answer a question for you. We are going to put the CEU link for my learning plan because you will get a half an hour of credit for today's um, very fast, speedy, um, <laughs> PD, which is what these seem to be in the afternoons. Anybody have any questions or any ideas that have come to mind as we've been going through this? Has anybody seen this used before? You know, I haven't either, but I loved that blog site. I loved her enthusiasm when I was reading through that too. <laughs> yes, and the, um, the blog site that where they used it in a professional development for their staff. I just really loved the ideas of building it up by bringing in the chef hats or, you know, you go buy Krispy Kreme and get Krispy Kreme hats, you know, for your students to wear or, um, you know, anything that's going to engage them and draw them in and really get them into that role. Um, other thoughts or ideas? Sometimes you can do the same lesson that you would do here, just the regular way we do it, and it's not engaging, but just adding those little touches can make a world of difference. Yes, definitely. I used to do a, um, a, one of my lessons as a theme on um, an emergency room, and I had a heartbeat going on the smart board, and I would bring in scrubs for all the kids to wear. Right now, I guess we couldn't do that unless we... Um, sanitized them all in between classes, but um, it was a lot of fun. The kids loved dressing up with, with the scrubs and pretending like they were doctors for the day, you know, so I feel like you do, Kendra, anytime that we can add some uh, pizzazz to it and really pique their interest, it, it helps them to have a lot of fun with the learning. All right, well, um, Pam, have you already put that CEU I did, link? I put that link in. 
thank you it's all for being with us chat. today and keep us posted if you do this activity. Yes, or if we can help you, if I can jump in and help facilitate this in a classroom, I would love to do that too, since there's, um, what, five or six of you here, that might be a doable thing. So holler at us if we can help in that way as well. Bye. All right, thank you.